Hello students, today we are going to discuss a very important concept in economics. We shall study what is equilibrium and how it relates to different concepts such as consumer equilibrium, market equilibrium and firm equilibrium. So let's start with the lecture. But before that, Myself, Muhammad Nadeem Server is teaching economics at Pakistan's one of the best business schools, Institute of Business Administration, Karachi, since last six years. So, first, what is equilibrium? Dear students, in ordinary language, equilibrium means a state of balance. That is a state in which opposite forces acting on a body are cancelling out each other. You can see in the picture, here there is some weight on the right side as well as on the left side. So this rod will be in balance if the weight on the right side and weight on the left side acting in opposite direction will balance out each other. Similarly, in other picture, you can see a man performing a very difficult art. He will be in equilibrium when different forces acting from right, left, up or down will be cancelling out or balancing out each other. And in that state, we will say that the person is in equilibrium. So, in other words, equilibrium is a state in which there is no tendency for the change to occur. Now, let's see how it relates to market equilibrium. First of all, market. Market in economics is a place, is a system or a mechanism that connects buyers and sellers of a product together they negotiate with each other and finally agree on a specific price and quantity of the commodity to be bought and sold. So here we can see that there are two forces, one demand and other supply. Demand that comes from consumer side and supply that comes from producer side. So in this graph, you can see that the demand curve downward sloping and the supply curve upward sloping are crossing each other at point E. So here where the quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied is a state where we can say that this market is in equilibrium. And as we know that in equilibrium, there is no tendency for the chain to occur. So Let's assume if the price settles at P1, what will happen? We can see that at price P1, the quantity supplied QS1 is insufficient to meet the quantity demanded QD1. Therefore, there will be shortage in the market. Seeing this, some of the consumers who will not be able to get this product at the given price will offer some higher prices. Therefore, the price will start moving up. And you know, when price increases, producer find an opportunity to earn more profit. Therefore, they will increase the quantity supplied and we will move along the supply curve upward. However, when the price goes up, some of the consumers will not be able to purchase that commodity or will not be interested to do that. Therefore, the supply will contract and this will continue until we reach the point E and this process will stop there. If it goes beyond that, there will be surplus commodity in the market. So the price will come down eventually when the price will be at P and quantity traded will be at Q, there will be no tendency for the further change to occur and we will say that market is in equilibrium. Now let's discuss consumer equilibrium. Consumers as you know are the people who purchase a commodity and then consume it 
to get utility or satisfaction from it. So we should ask a question from ourselves that where will be the point where there is no tendency for further change to occur. As we know that consumer gets utility from the consumption of the good and as the consumer consumes more and more of a good, his or her utility goes on to increase but at decreasing rate. Therefore, the point where the consumer's utility will be at maximum consumer would not consumer will not like that point to change a bit he or she will not consume anything more than that or anything less than that so therefore the consumer will be in equilibrium at a point where his or her satisfaction is at maximum we know that the satisfaction of the consumer or utility is represented by indifference curves and higher the indifference curves, higher is the utility. So what is the other force? The other force that is stopping consumer from going to the highest possible indifference curve is consumers purchasing power represented by the budget line. Therefore, the consumer will tend to maximize his or her satisfaction, keeping himself or herself within the limits set by the budget line. So, the consumer will be in equilibrium, that is, he or she will be maximizing his or her utility at a point where indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. And we know the point at which two curves are tangent to each other is a point where the slope of both of these curves, that is the slope of indifference curve and the slope of budget line are equal. I have recorded a detailed lecture on indifference curve, budget line and the consumer equilibrium. The link is given in the description. You can watch that for understanding the complete detail of indifference curve, budget line and consumer equilibrium. Now let's move to firm equilibrium. A firm is an organization that sells goods and services to earn the profit. And we know that the profit is the difference between revenue and cost. The motive of the firm is to earn profit. Again we should ask ourselves what will be the situation in which the firm would not like to occur any change. That is, there will be no tendency for any change to occur. That will be the point where firm is earning maximum profit. So let's see it. We know that there are two forces. One is the total revenue which is a straight line when market is perfectly competitive and a curve like shape when the market is not perfectly competitive. And other force is total cost whose shape remains the same in any kind of the market. The vertical distance between the total revenue curve and total cost curve shows the profit at given point. Here we can see that from the heights of M and we can easily see that the profit is maximum or the height of this arrow is maximum when the firm is producing Q star quantity of the good. So the firm is in equilibrium where the distance between total revenue and total cost is maximum given that total revenue is greater than total cost. We have the concept of marginal revenue which represents the addition in total revenue because of selling one more unit of the commodity. And similarly we have a concept of marginal cost which tells us the change in total cost due to production of one more unit of the commodity. 
So here you can see in the competitive market, marginal revenue and average revenue are represented by horizontal straight line. Marginal cost is an upward sloping curve. Here, if the firm produces, say, at this point, the dotted line shows the profit that firm earns from this particular unit. We can see that this is positive. So, firm should produce more. Again, we can see the dotted line which represents the profit of this particular unit and it is also positive. So, the total profit is increasing and subsequently we can see that in all these areas the dotted line which represents the gap between marginal revenue that is the additional revenue from the sale of the unit and the additional cost occurred to produce that unit this is positive so it is adding to the total profit and total profit is increasing both these curves meet at point E. So at this particular unit, the marginal revenue and marginal cost will be equal. Producing any unit after that will have a higher marginal cost and lower marginal revenue. That is why it will not further increase the profit. Instead, it will decrease the total profit. Therefore, we can see that the profit of the firm will be maximum if it produces at a point where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue and the slope of marginal cost is greater than the slope of marginal revenue. Same is the situation in non-competitive market. However, here marginal revenue and average revenue are not equal and they are not horizontal straight line, but they are downward sloping curves. Rest remain the same. That is all for this lecture. I think it will help you conceptualize the concept of equilibrium and economics and you will be able to apply it to every situation. I have complete playlist on microeconomics and macroeconomics which you can find on your screen as well as the link is given in the description. Please watch those lectures and let me know about your comments, questions or feedback. Thank you and goodbye.